Hi, this set of videos has made uh, everything that you need to know about how to teach and record online to post and use those videos is in one video. And these times over here, these times over here are um, those times in the video that you would go to to listen or read just about that. These times are also hyperlinked in the bottom in the comment section of this YouTube video. So you can click and go directly there. But I felt like um, there was a lot of different videos people were having to go to to find resources and I wanted to make it so there was just one uh, that you could bookmark and come back to if you needed to know how to do something. So we're going to go over all these things in this video. How to set up your classroom, the available tools, and how to use all those tools. And then finally, what to do with those videos, how to post them on YouTube, and how to use them in Moodle. All those things are going to be covered and they're all at those spots on um, the time indicator there that you can go to um, in this video to just get to that part of the content. So let's get started. Okay, so the next section we want to talk about is classroom setup. Uh, this is something you're going to do um, once, maybe recheck every once in a while to make sure it's set up the way you want it to be set up. Um, but uh, it's something that you need to go through and make sure it's done the way you want it that one time. So first of all, uh, although this video is showing a specific camera, it doesn't matter what camera that you're using, whether it's the original IPVO, the new IPVO, or the new video camera that we got in the summer of 2020 because all the IPVOs in the world were sold out and we had to find something new. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're all going to work in um, the classroom. Now, when we look at setting up the classroom, we have those cables which have limited length in them and they might work, but we also have extension cables of 15 and 30 feet um, if you need to run it somewhere else in your room to set it up correctly. Also, if you have a mic that you want to use other than the one that's part of that camera, and you can try the way it is and then say, nah, I want better sound. If you want a microphone and you want to set that up, we have little hubs that go at the end of the extension to plug in those microphones as well. So once you've got your uh, camera, you want to go ahead and plug it in and open up the software that's on your desktop called Visualizer. Now Visualizer is that little green icon and what I do is turn on my projector and um, I make it full screen and then I look at that while I manipulate my camera to figure out exactly where I want it to point because I'm trying to get it so it gets me and my screen and what I'm doing, but it doesn't get any students at all in my classroom. So you could set it up head on, you could set it up at an angle for the right or the left. Uh, I put it, as I'm looking at the classroom, on the right side so that while I'm writing, I'm looking basically at the camera so that um, any student that's at law or that is online, part of the time I'm kind of addressing them as I'm speaking. And as I'm talking, I'm kind of talking at that camera mic, which is off on uh, that side of the room. The other option, besides using the document camera that, that we have available to all of our staff, um, is to use your school issued laptop with a webcam on there. You could set that up in the very front center of your room and open up whatever tool you decide you're going to use on the school laptop and use that to record. Uh, that might be helpful if you're trying to do online classes with maybe you've got two or three students not online. If you use that, particularly if um, you're not using one of the digital tools like your Memeo or your smart board, if I'm just writing on the, on the board, you could use that and that way you, you can see the students that you're teaching to. They'll be kind of in a seat in front of you and then you've got the other students uh, behind them as well. That's one of the options uh, that you could look at as well. In any case, whichever one you use, I highly recommend you practice with it once or twice to make sure it sees what you think it's going to see. Again, even with the laptop, you can open up Visualizer and see what it's going to see so you know what the camera angle looks like. So that's it for setting up your classroom. Okay. Uh, the first tool we're going to look at is Zoom. Zoom is 
Uh, one of the things that we're all using for meetings all the time right now, and um, I kind of was not a Zoom fan until I tried teaching with it. Uh, it has uh, a setup right through your Google sign-on. So when you uh, go to Zoom, if you don't have an account already, um, all you do is say create an account and use single sign-on from your school Google account. Um, after you've got uh, account set up and you're in to Zoom, the next thing you'll do is to set up a meeting. So uh, you can have it be a recurring thing that you see every day at this time I'm going to be online with uh, Zoom so that it kind of becomes a scheduled thing for you. Maybe you only teach using it on first block or second block or whatever. Uh, you know which block is the best one to record um, as far as your students that are in that room and who's the best behave or maybe you do them all and decide which one's the best. Uh, but you, all you have to do then is to start your meeting and then after you've got your meeting started you're going to go and share your webcam, make sure your mic is on, and share your screen. Once you've got that, now you've got it set up so that whatever I do on my smart board, whatever I do on my Mimeo, um, is going to be recorded as part of this recording um, that you're doing for your class. Then you can go ahead, once you have everything set up, and just say start recording. Uh, Zoom has nice features up just by going up to the top the things pop down you can pause at any time you can resume at any time you can mute at any time and unmute um, i would recommend that um, you do your traditional instruction and then when you normally go to working with students questions and answers that's when i would say okay now we're going to do um, the exercises you're kind of prompting the online users that that's what they're going to do now. You could even say, if you're online, reference the calendars for the exercises we're going to be working on today. And then pause the video. Do the classroom work that you're going to do. Do the questions and answers if, if they're not projected. If they are projected, just mute the mic. Say, hey, we're going to do the questions and answers right now. I'm going to be muting the mic uh, to hide their responses of the students you should be working through this on your at your own time um, and then you can unpause you can unmute um, and it, that's why i say it's something you need to play with a little bit uh, the negative of zoom the only negative of zoom is the fact that you have to uh, install an app on the user end in order to participate in that whether it's a phone app or an app on the pc has to be installed in order to participate in a Zoom. Uh, you don't need an app if you're just going to upload the recording. It's just a web recording on YouTube or whatever uh, that they're going to watch. Uh, there are concerns with Zooms that it was previously hacked, and it was hacked four times in the month of June, um, and that's because it wasn't a huge tool. I didn't even, I never even heard of Zoom prior to um, NTI happening, uh, but many of us became more proficient with Zoom as time went on. So I think Zoom's a great tool. When you're done recording, you just go into My Documents, look for the Zoom folder. Inside there, there is a folder uh, for each recording that you had, and then there should be a file in there called Zoom. And you can preview it before you upload it, and then you can use that file um, as we're doing at the end of this video segment to upload into YouTube and then make available to your students uh, through Moodle. Okay, let's talk about um, using Google Meet. Uh, Google Meet is another online tool. Um, the advantage of Google Meet is that it integrates flawlessly with Google Classroom. You can set up a, a daily meet or period meet. You can have your students join you with Meet. Uh, when you record with Google Meet, it uploads directly to Google Drive. You don't have to upload to YouTube. You can then just link that video into your Moodle course later or any, into any of your Moodle activities uh, later. It needs no application installed. Uh, it uses directly from the web browser. Uh, the negative of Google Meet and why I don't prefer it over Zoom is that there is no pause button. You record and you stop recording. 
they might add a pause button later, or maybe there's one that I've never been able to find. I, I throw that out there. If somebody knows how to pause with Google Meet, that would be a great thing to know. Um, but as far as I can tell, you just have to record and then record again and record again. And you end up with multiple recordings, which again is okay. Um, they're all going to be on your Google Drive and be able to use them. Now, setting up a Google Meet is easy. You just go to meet.google.com and set up the Meet, provide the link to your students, or do it from your Google Classroom if you've got Google Classroom set up. Um, and you just go into the Meet, and then on the Meet, just like with the other tools, I need to share my camera, I need to share, my, turn on my mic, I need to share my screen, and then the record button is right up top. I just pet press that recording button, and then I minimize the browser as opposed to Zoom where the controls stay up top. That does not happen with Meet. I just minimize the browser, and now it's recording and, and showing my screen because I've already screen shared, and then I teach whatever I'm going to teach in um, using my digital whiteboard, whether I'm projecting using PowerPoint or using the smart software or using the Mimeo software, no matter how you teach, whatever you've got projected on that board is what's going to be in the recording. You can't use a dry erase marker. If you do, nobody will see it other than the camera view over on the side, which would be hard to pick up if that was the case. So once you're done with Google Meet, after about a half an hour, you'll get an email saying that the video is ready and that's a roundhouse number. And then you can go there and provide that link uh, and use it in your um, Moodle class for any activities, just like you would a YouTube link. Positive again is no application and it uses the web browser. The only negative I can tell you about Google Meet besides having to lower and and bring back the Chrome window to, to do uh, any changes is that um, you can't pause the recording. Other than that, Google Meet works perfectly. So I highly recommend uh, trying that one as well. And that's Google Meet. So our last online tool is called Big Blue Button. And I sent out a video on Big Blue Button um, some time ago. Uh, the advantage of Big Blue Button is you're not using any outside um, sources. You're not using Google. You're not using um, Zoom. It's integrated directly in with Moodle. And so it's a Moodle activity. You add a Big Blue Button to your course just once. Um, and then it's on your class that anytime you want to go online, you just click the big blue button activity in Moodle. And then you cl click that you want to join or start the session. And that brings up big blue button. Uh, once big blue button comes up in your browser, again, like the other tools, you need to share your video. You have to share your mic. Um, you have to share your screen and then you can just start recording right up top. Uh, it, unlike Google Meet and like Zoom, lets you pause and unpause throughout a uh, class. So whenever you're teaching something, uh, basically like Google Meet, you have to bring Chrome back up um, and then you just hit the pause button. And when you're ready to start again, you hit the record button and it will put it all together and put those breaks in there uh, that you pause uh, during the, the process of your class. Uh, the advantage of Big Blue Button is that it's hosted here at National Trail on our Big Blue Button server. Uh, only students can join your class and any recording you do is automatically archived right there under your Big Blue Button and you can have students go back and look at those videos at any time. You can um, add descriptors of what the class was over in there, uh, but it's automatic. It's like Google Meet in that Google Meet puts it to drive and then you've got a link, but in this case, it's just in Moodle for you and students can go back and view those classes at any time. It automatically shows what date it was recorded on. Um, and 
when you look at big blue button it allows them to go full screen with the screen or full screen with you they can go back and forth with what part of it they want to see full screen uh, and it does a fairly large uh, and a fairly good image of both using big blue button okay i want to talk about obs studio obs studio is another tool that we can use to instruct that allows you to capture anything that you want to uh, along with anything else you want to it, it is what i'm using right now it allows me to capture a screen a video a website and have a different video down in the corner like what i'm doing right now uh, i am in front of a green screen which is how i get an outline and all the video is behind me um, you don't have to green screen you can just have your webcam cropped down in one corner as well the first thing you have to do is download and install OBS Studio. It's from obsproject.com slash download. You have to install it, configure it, and then you record. And it's and it's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the configuration. So I've installed OBS Studio. It's a simple download. You click on it, you say do you want to install? Yes. The first time you open it up, it looks like this. It's totally blank. There's nothing on it to see at all. You have to add. Um, what you want to see. So the black screen there in the middle where it says add sources of video is what it would record right now. There would be no sound, no picture, no nothing. You have to tell OBS Studio everything you want. So down there under sources, you hit the plus button to add a source. And the first source is gonna be your computer screen. And that's called a display capture. So you have all these different sources available to you. Um, you hit display capture. You can see there's other ones. People use it to stream games. Uh, you can use it to capture video, all kinds of stuff. We're only going to talk about two of those today. The first one's display capture. When you click on it, you can add a name. You don't need to. Just click OK. And it's going to, by default, get your display. If you've got more than one display, and I do right now. I've got my laptop, and over here I've got uh, another screen. Uh, the down arrows right here let you choose which screen you want to capture. So if you are at school and you have a screen at your teacher desk and a screen over there, that's your smart board, Mimeo board, digital whiteboard, whatever, uh, make sure you pick your digital whiteboard because you want to record what you're teaching, not what's over there at your desk that you're not using, unless that's where you're going to teach. So you just click OK on that. And then it will look really weird if you've got one screen like it does on this because you're seeing a recording of the screen of the screen of the screen. It doesn't matter what's on there right now. Um, it's going to automatically go to the full size of your recording. You can change the size by just dragging uh, the red box and making it smaller or bigger. I, I don't know why you'd ever make it smaller. And then down here, there's little uh, lock unlock. Once you lock it, it won't move again. So I always lock those things. Um, so now I've got a screen option. The second thing I want to add is, is me, right? So um, then you're going to hit the plus button again, and now you're going to add a video capture device, a camera. Um, so you go ahead and click video capture device, and then it's going to let you name it. If you have multiple cameras in your room, you might want to name it. I don't know many people that do other than me. I've got three different cameras in my room because I've got overhead cameras, I've got a security camera in the corner, I've got one of these cameras. So you might want, you don't need to. So you just click OK again. And then it's going to say, is this the camera you want? If there's different cameras, um, you can click the up and down arrow buttons to say which one you want. You don't need to. If you only have one webcam, it's going to show the one you have. You click OK. And then, I already resized this one. It was huge. I had to grab that red box in the corner and I drag it down to where I want me to be in the video. And in this case, you can see I dragged it to the bottom right. Um, the reason I do bottom right normally is because all the buttons on a Windows computer on the bottom left and I'm if I'm telling people how to do stuff and I'm over top of the thing that I'm trying to get them to click, it doesn't make sense, right? So that's... I try to keep, just like you can see on this one, I try to keep myself out of the way when I'm, when I'm teaching. And I can make myself as small as I want. You can make yourself that small, right? Um, don't make yourself too small because then you kind of remove the whole point of you being in the video. 
You can also um, crop it a whole bunch if you want to. There, it's called the transform. You just right click on it and say edit transform. I'm getting a little advanced on that. So that's it. Now we've got it so we can record our screen and we've got our webcam on there. The next thing we have to do is go to settings and uh, adjust some settings. Number one, there's no audio right now. Uh, well, there is. Uh, it automatically added, you can see the video capture device, your webcam audio. And if that's your mic, that's fine. Um, that is not the mic we use uh, at school. It works, but depending on how what far away you put your webcam, it may not work great. So uh, you may want to have a, a separate camera. I'm going to grab one real fast, see if I got it over on the desk over there. So you might want to get a separate camera like a uh, blue microphone uh, snowball um, that picks up better um, or a Yeti or a Yeti and Nano. Those are some good uh, USB microphones that can pick up your classroom a little better. But the microphone and the webcam or in, even in this laptop uh, can do the job for you uh, just fine. So we go to settings. Um, And we have to set up, oh, did I do? Okay, no, okay. So we go to settings and the first thing we have to set up is hotkeys. There's no easy default on how to start recording and how to pause and how to stop recording. So hotkeys are the keys you're gonna hit on your keyboard to make those things happen. Now, you could just re start recording at the beginning of your class, stop it at the end of your class, and then use YouTube or some software like PowerDirector to trim it in, that's perfectly fine. I like using hotkeys. So we click on hotkeys and there are um, just four things that I set up. Um, how to start recording, stop recording, pause recording, and unpause recording. Those are the only four things I set up. And I use the Alt key because nothing else uses that while I'm teaching. So I use Alt R to record, Alt S, to stop, Alt P to pause, and Alt R again to unpause, because anytime I hit Alt R, it means I wanna record. So um, if I pause, I know start recording is Alt R, and that means you hold down the Alt key, and you hit R, hold down, the, I'm not gonna do it so I don't stop it, Alt key and push S when I'm finished with the whole thing, Alt P to pause it, Alt R to unpause it, because if you're going to try to make this concise, the last thing you want to do is record the 45 minute class, including all the activity time and other things going on in the classroom, right? Um, so you might want to say, hey, I'm pausing it right now. Hey, everybody, we're going to do this activity. You'll see it down below in this video. And I'm pausing it right now while you do that activity. Boom, and you pause it and then you unpause and say, hey, we're back from doing that activity and you, and you move on from there. So that's what the hot keys are for. Um, the next thing you have to set up is a sound input. Now this one, um, because we've got the mic, I always go to the, where I go to audio here, this is in the settings, and then I go to the mic auxiliary audio and I change it to default, or if I've got a separate microphone, like you could see all those, there's three other sound options on my desktop. Um, I could pick one of those that I want to use as my microphone. You just need to make sure you set something because there's a little sound bar you see going back and forth. You should be able to talk and see that sound bar. If you don't see that sound bar moving, then you're going to do a really good silent video. And in YouTube, you could turn it to black and white and make it a black and white, no sound video, but I'm not sure why you do that. So set your audio um, so, and make sure that you can, you can hear it. Um, the last thing is I go to output to see where my videos are going to. I have it set to recording quality, high quality. Um, and then I also have, uh, I make sure it's going to my videos folder. Uh, you can browse to and put them any place you want to. Um, but you need to make sure you've got them going and you know where they're going someplace. After that, you're done. Set up a complete. All I do at this point is I open OBS Studio Make sure that the sound is bouncing across. Hey, I'm gonna pull this over here. This is gonna look confusing because I'm gonna have a double of the whole thing. But here we see my mic bouncing back and forth here on OBS Studio. I've got the desktop audio off. That's what that does right there. So any sounds that come from my computer doesn't, don't end up on my video. 
but the mic, you could see my sound bouncing back and forth uh, right there. So I should see that. Um, I have two screens, so I can move to the other screen. But at school, I would minimize that. Um, so I'm not even looking at it, it's just running down below. And when I'm ready to record, I hit Alt R on my keyboard, I do my lesson, I hit Alt S when I'm done, and I have that on here. Start recording, Alt R, pause, Alt P, unpause, or start recording again, Alt R, and then Alt S to stop. That's it. Okay, the last tool is Smart Recorder. We've been using it for years. Many, many of our staff already know how to use that and do use it to record lessons. Um, the reason I mentioned this one last is at this point, if we're going to be trying to teach online, uh, using Smart Recorder works, uh, but it doesn't get you in the video. And I think we learned from uh, the NTI and from feedback from students and parents that and, and from teachers, that you are the most important thing in the class. And to have online instruction that they never see you, they don't feel like they're interacting with you, they don't know you're even there, is not as good. If you're used to using Smart Recorder, you, you can still do that. In fact, I've already had some teachers say they're just gonna record separate lessons so that they're, they don't have to worry about the student part of it. The thing is, you're taking yourself uh, who is the most important part of the process out of the equation of teaching by using Smart Recorder. It is a tool, I just don't think it's the best tool that you could be using um, to teach your classes with right now. Um, now the next tool is not really an online tool, it's just a tool that you have and that's Visualizer, the same software that you used to set up your camera in the first place can be used also to record classes. If you're not using uh, projector. If you're not using a digital whiteboard, um, then you're not going to get the same quality of video. But if you put your camera in the middle of your class, pointing right at your board, um, and you focus it on what you're doing, you can just open Visualizer and hit record and record your session. It'll get the audio and the video, whatever the document camera has in its view. Doesn't show up as good as doing one of the other tools that actually is capturing the screen. But um, if you're not using those tools anyway, it's doing about as good as you're gonna get of you teaching the classroom. Uh, and that's Visualizer, you just record and stop recording and then you'll use YouTube, you'll move it on to YouTube and then you'll put it on your Moodle course like you would with um, either uh, Zoom or if you recorded it using the last tool, which is Smart Recorder. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is YouTube. Uh, we've been using it at Trail for an extremely long period of time, but there's a possibility that there's some teachers that still haven't set up a YouTube channel and have never uploaded videos into their YouTube channel. Um, so the act of setting up a YouTube channel is very simple. Okay, so let's talk about setting up a YouTube account and setting your default settings. So if you're logged into uh, Gmail, all you have to do is go over to the launch button where it says Google Apps, click on it, and go down to YouTube. Yours might be in a different location than mine. Click on it and it will open up YouTube. First thing we're gonna do is make an account. So we click on our icon in the top right hand corner and go to settings. Now, I don't have a channel because it says your channel, create a channel. You can only have one channel and educational account. You can't have one per class anymore. Um, so you click create an account and it's going to say normally your first name and last name. I already did this once and named it NTHS Science because I think you should probably do uh, either if you're, uh, for instance, maybe you put NTMS eighth grade science or something like that. Identify the subject area. You can change the name later, by the way. Um, but probably don't want it to be your name. If you do, maybe you want to put uh, just Mr. Pool, not your first and last name. That's up to you. Once I am ready, I just hit create channel and it's now made a channel called Mr. Pool. There we go. Uh, so we've got our account made. Uh, and we have to set up some default stuff for our, 
our class. Now, first of all, it says channel not approved for national channel at US. We could go ahead and approve our channel because we're teachers uh, so that students would be able to come to it later. I didn't even notice that. I'm going to click on there and I'm going to go back down to settings again to set some things up. And we're going to go to channel status and features. Now, there's some specific features in here that we want to have. Uh, you may want live streaming. You will want longer videos, which means you can have a video over 15 minutes. That's really the only thing that we need to enable. This one we definitely need to enable. So if I click enable, it's going to bring me to this screen to verify my account. It's going to call and give me a six digit code to verify that I'm a person and not a bot setting up the account. And it has to be a US number because I'm saying my country is US. So I can either have it call me or text me, either one. I'm gonna go ahead and say call, and then you're gonna type in your phone number, and it needs to either be a cell phone or a home phone number. It cannot be uh, the phone number of the school because it won't be able to get through to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my phone number and hit the submit button. And as soon as I hit the submit button, it takes, well, that many seconds. And I'm going to answer the phone. Thank you for using Google phone verification. Remember, you should not share this code with anyone else. And no one from Google will ever ask for this code. Your code is 8298873. Again, your code is eight two nine eight so then i'm just going to hit submit i just now realized i wasn't in the video uh and it says your account is verified so now that i've done that if i go down and look at the same place in settings and go to the channel status and features you can see that i am now enabled for longer videos if i want to stream live i have to enable that by clicking enable and that's going to take 24 hours to be active. It just won't work just because I clicked on it. Why? I have no idea. Uh, but it won't work until tomorrow. So I've got those things set up. The next thing I want to set up, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to, going to go to YouTube Studio this time to set up my channel defaults. Those things that I want to always be the same so I don't have to set them. So if I go down here to the bottom left now to settings, I have the ability to set my upload defaults, and that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to go to upload defaults. I'm going to have a default description, Mr. Pools High School Class Recordings. Sounds good. Uh, the title is going to be different every time, so there's no reason to do that. Uh, visibility by default. I want it to be unlisted. That means every time I upload, no one will see it except for me until I put the link somewhere for them to be able to see it. Always, always. I'm going to go to the advanced settings as well. I'm going to say that this is an educational video and that it is never aired in the United States and that it is English and that helps the um, text system you can see English, United States. It helps it do the closed captions for you. Um, and then I've got down here, uh, comment visibility. I'm going to say hold all comments for review. People can comment. No one's ever going to see them but me unless I approve them and then it'll show up on the YouTube uh, settings. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to come back into settings. And I'm going to go to there we go and I'm gonna go okay and I'm gonna go back to settings and I'm gonna go to the channel and do some settings here too uh, country I'm gonna set US Almost there, there we go. United States is my country. Advanced settings, this one's important. You, unless you wanna answer this question every single time, you're gonna say, yes, this channel is made for kids. That means all students would be able to view your video 
without authenticating and, and having the channel approved. And that is it. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, I'm going to disable ads. Why would I want my students to see ads? So I'm going to disable interest-based ads, and then I'm going to hit save. Now all my defaults are set up for my channel, and um, after that, I'm ready to upload. Okay, so we're ready to upload a YouTube video. Uh, again, we're just logged on and we go to YouTube. Since we've already got our channel set up, all we have to do is click the plus button up here in the top right hand corner to create, and we have choices of uploading or going live. Click upload. We can either select files or drag and drop them right onto this. I'm gonna go ahead and select files and I'm gonna go down to my chapter one video right here. So that's now uploading as soon as I select it. The file is always going to be named, or the video is always always going to be named whatever the file was. Chapter one. I can change the name. And let's see, it says my class, and I'm going to go down. I can add it to a playlist. It's already selected that it's made for kids. I'm going to say next, next. It's already selected as unlisted. I'm going to go ahead before I finish. I'm going to click on this and it's going to open in a new page and then I'm going to hit save. Now, it doesn't matter how big your file is, I can hit close on this while it's uploading and processing. It doesn't matter that it's not done. I can already use this video URL in Moodle uh, to make an activity. It just means the video will work when it gets there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take a look back here. You can see it's it's all the way done and if I want to get that address later all I have to do is come to my channel videos and click the little YouTube icon and it opens up the video that I just clicked on okay I want to use this YouTube video in my Moodle class so I just need this address up here if I just click in the bar it highlights the whole thing and then I can hit control C to copy that address that's all I need uh, to put it into a Moodle course, I'm going to go ahead and go to Moodle and I'm going to go to my advanced technologies class. Now, I can put this in any activity or resource anywhere in Moodle as long as I get the full text editing page. So it doesn't matter where you want to use it, the process is the same. If I want to add it to the date on the calendar, all I have to do is click new event and I can say class or chapter one introduction has to have a has to have a name. That's why it has that asterisk. Now there's nowhere to do it, so I hit show more, and now all of a sudden I have that full editing box. I just paste the YouTube address in there. Then I have to scroll down to see the save. And once I save, it's added it to today's date. If I want to click, see what it looks like. I click on it. There's the course introduction. The YouTube video is already embedded. And that's how I get it in the calendar. Putting it in any activity or resource is exactly the same. I just paste it in there and then the students would be able to watch the video as part of what other exercise or activity or resource you want to list for them in your course.